And you are looking well, too. So good of you to come. Why, goodness, what a fine young lady we've become all of a sudden, eh? I shall expect a dance later, mind. Thank you, Mr. West. <laughs> and, my love, you must not stand up for too long. Oh, nonsense, Dr. my dear. Dr. Perry was most insistent that you take care this evening. I promise to rest when I am tired. Mm. Emma! Mrs. Hey, well, good evening, good evening. And Miss Smith. Good evening. Good evening, Harriet. Good evening, Mrs. Weston. We are a trifle early, I fancy, but you did ask especially that we should be in good time. I did indeed. I should be most grateful for your help and support. Well, I'm sure you will not need it, but Harriet and I are quite prepared to do anything that may be required of us, are we not, Harriet? Oh, yes, indeed, Miss Woodhouse. Well, Emma, I see you are casting a critical glance upon our decorations. I was merely admiring your wife's taste and skill yet again, Mr. Weston. I have never seen this room look so well. Oh, I think it looks tolerably gay and festive, don't it? Harriet, my dear, since you were so kind as to offer your services, I wonder if you could find a stool or a cushion or something for poor Mr. Freeman's bad foot. Certainly, Miss Thank Mrs. You. Weston. Emma, my dear, I see a young fellow over there who should be no stranger to you, even after two months. Uh, Frank! You mean Mr. Churchill? Please do not disturb him, Mr. Weston. He does not hear. Oh, no, no, no. Frank! Frank, my boy! Oh, Miss Woodhouse. So we meet once again, eh? No need to inquire after your health, I can see. I have the evidence of it before my eyes. And you equally, Mr. Churchill, I am sure, have not suffered during your absence from us. Oh, but I have, I do assure you. Except perhaps to have become a little hard of hearing. Oh, uh, well, I was most anxious to see the newcomer amongst you. The great Mrs. Elton. I've heard so much of her in my stepmother's letters. And you will hear much more the moment she arrives, I can assure you. <laughs> she was to collect Miss Bates and Jane. She has quite taken poor Jane under her wing lately. Yes, so I understand. Though why I say poor Jane, I really do not know. I must confess, I have a great curiosity to see the lady. She would be vastly flattered to know that, I'm sure. <laughs> but enough of Mrs. Elton. You have not forgot that we are engaged for the first dance, I hope. Oh, but that was for a previous occasion, Mr. Churchill. Nonsense! You gave me your word. Oh, no, no. You cannot hold me to it. You know you can't. <laughs> oh, very well, then. Since I see you are in a playful mood tonight, I will begin all over again. Miss Woodhouse, may I have the honour and the pleasure of the first dance? Mr. Churchill, if you persist so, what can I say but yes, thank you. Good. Now we are back on firm ground once again. Obliging of you. <laughs> Not really wet, nothing to signify. Just a passing shower, no harm done. <laughs> These stout shoes. But poor Jane and Mrs. Elton. Uh, so unexpected. Has anyone such a thing? He came on just as we drew up at the door, quite sharp. And poor Jane does take cold so easily. I said to Rose, we were starting out, Jane, dear. I said, now, are you sure that tippet will be enough? It's, it's all right. No good. It's all right, Miss Bates. Oh, I have the very Mr. thing. Churchill, oh, I did Catherine. not know you were there. So, oh, Mr. Knightley, if you had a mind to play Sir Galahad yourself, you'd find yourself forestalled. My dear Emma, I hope I could help a lady from a carriage without first <laughs> advertising the fact to the entire company. Well, oh, Mr. Weston, oh, how fine it all is, is it not, Jane, dear? It's quite a transformation. You must have had an Aladdin's lamp. It's a veritable fairy lamp, truly it is. I'm glad you like it, ma'am. I think we shall be tolerably comfortable here, certainly. And do you not think Jane looks well? Yes. I tell you in confidence, she made her gown herself. Every stitch by her own hand. But do not repeat it, for she would not thank me for having oh, told no, her. No, no, no. But I said to her, Jane, I said you should be proud. Why, there's not a dressmaker in London who goes, oh, my! Dr. Hughes, well, how oh, very nice. And Mrs. Nice Nice. 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 Fine young man, I consider Frank Churchill. The way he took my arm to hand me from the carriage was extremely gentlemanly. Yes, I like him very well indeed. No, I see very few other jewels in the room apart from my own. You're very silent, Jane, dear. Are you nervous? Not at all, thank sure you. Sure you need not be. I'll see to it that you get part of us. Oh, thank you, ma'am, but you really need not concern yourself with my account. How do you think the light has done my hair? Do you think this style suits me? Yes, very well. 
Nobody could think less of such matters in a general way than I, of course, but I feel upon this occasion I owe it to Mr. and Mrs. Weston to look my best, since I'm sure everybody's eyes are bound to be upon me. Jane, dear, how pretty you look. Excuse me a moment. Jane, indeed. She's extremely easy and familiar in her modes of speech. That is nothing. But how do you like her? Who? Mrs. Elton? Not at all. Well, she is handsome. Oh, yes. I thought you would say that. Well, it is true, is it not? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, she is handsome. I grant you. But, ah, I see the true business of the evening is about to begin. Emma, my dear, I do hope you won't mind, but I feel obliged to ask Mrs. Elton to lead the dancing. She will expect it. Of course, Mrs. Weston, I understand. I do hope you will not feel slighted. No, not in the least. It is her right. Thank you, my dear. You're very understanding. The only thing is, what are we to uh, suggest as her partner, you surely think Frank should accompany her. I'm sorry, Father. I already have a prior engagement. Oh, you've engaged yourself already. Ah, but on this occasion, Mr. Churchill, I am quite prepared to release you. I refuse to be released. Yes, yes, of course. I think you should ask her yourself, my love. I shall not say thank you to stand up with an old codger like me. Indeed she will. Go on with you. Don't worry, Father. So long as she may be first, she will not care whom it is with. <laughs> Mr. Churchill, that was not kind. It was not intended to be. Oh, now, Mr. Weston, must it be I once again? Is there really no one? Oh, well, then I suppose I must say yes. <laughs> Really, it is almost enough to make one think of becoming a bride oneself. <laughs> Miss Woodhouse. Thank you, Miss Mr. West, I'm afraid we do it quite differently at Maple Grove. Dear poor no. Harry. Don't worry, Elton is there. Do not dance, Mr. Elton. Most readily, Mrs. Weston, if you would do me the honour. Oh, no, no, my dancing days are past, I'm afraid. But little Miss Smith here lacks a partner. Oh, well, um, excuse me, ma'am. Not really much of a dancing man, I'm afraid. I really ask and hope that you might give me the pleasure. An old married man these days. So, if you'll forgive me. Ah, Mr. Knightley, you and I have to number ourselves as observers on this occasion, do we not? <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Harriet. Miss me. Would you do me the honour to join me on the floor? Miss Ma'am? Yes, you, Harriet. Come, let us show them what we can do. Hmm? Thank you, sir. Thank you. No need in the world to thank me. I see that Knight has taken pity on that poor little Smith child. Very obliging of him, I must say. Yes. What do you think? Extremely gentlemen. Oh, 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 Most enjoyable, Harriet, but far too short. I shall claim the honour of another dance later, if I may. Tell me, do you, uh, do you have dancing classes with Mrs. Goddard? Jane, dear, where are you? Ah, there you are, dear. Good evening. Good evening. Jane, dear, you must put on your tippet. You will catch cold. There are draughts in this room. I can feel them. And I do not need it. Oh, really. yes, dear, you must. Now, you know what always happens. I don't want to have you in bed tomorrow. Allow me. Oh, Mr. Churchill, how very obliging of you. Oh, how well you put it on, quite to the manner born. Are you not a lucky girl to receive so much attention? Now, come along, dear. Let us find the supper. Oh, it's for here. Thank you, Mary. Jane, are Thank you for your kindness to Harriet just now. I consider that man's behaviour most odious and hurtful. I fancy they both aimed at wounding more than poor Harriet. Most probably. Emma, 
Oh, have they become your enemies? Confess that at one time you did think that he and Harriet would have made a good match. I did, most mistakenly, as I now see. And they cannot forgive me for it. Well, I shall not scold you. I shall leave you to your reflections. Can you trust me to such flatterers? Does my vain spirit ever tell me I am wrong? Not your vain spirit, perhaps, but your serious one. If the first one leads you wrong, I'm sure the other tells you. I must confess that I was most mistaken in my judgment of Mr. Elton. There is a littleness in him which you saw and I did not. And I fully convinced myself of his being in love with Harriet. I realized I was sadly wrong. And in return for your acknowledging so much, let me do you the justice to say that you would have chosen for him better than he has for himself. You really think so? Harriet Smith has many excellent qualities, which Mrs. Elton is totally without. Well, I am very glad to hear you say that. And let me admit my own mistake. I underestimate her. She is an unpretending, artless, sweet-tempered girl, infinitely to be preferred by any man of good sense to a woman like Mrs. Elton. She is a dear, sweet creature and worth a hundred, Mrs. Elton. And I find her... You should set these young people an example. Everyone's lazy tonight. Everyone's half asleep. Gentlemen, oh, gentlemen, poor Mr. Weston, we really must bestir ourselves. Well, to whom are you engaged for this one? To you, if you will ask me. Will you? I think we are not quite so much brother and sister as to make it at all improper. Brother and sister? I should think not indeed. <laughs> What a morning! I met Miss Bates in Forbes and had her describing Jane's gown last night for half an hour at least. And another half an hour describing what was to be had at the supper table. Oh, has anybody called? Harriet, my love, are you feeling unwell? No, Mrs. Goddard. But you haven't moved since I came in and spoke to you just now. You spoke to me. I'm sorry, Mrs. Goddard. Well, I was about to ask if you and Betty Bickerton would run across the common to Donwell with this basket and thank Mr. Knightley for the apples. To Donwell, Mrs. Goddard? But if you're too tired after your exertions last night, I can ask one of the other girls to go with her. Oh, no, Mrs. Goddard. I'm not tired, truly. I'm not, not the least little bit. But the fresh air would do me some good. This basket, is it? Yes, dear. Oh, shall I give him your thanks, Mrs. Goddard? Well, of course, sir. But that is if... If I happen to see him. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Goddard. We shall not be long. Oh, my bonnet. Oh, Betty, Betty. <laughs> There's quite a fresh wind, I fear. The trees are moving somewhat. I don't know whether I'm wise. I'm quite sure you are, Papa. Oh, look, there's a dark cloud. I should have gone before. It was foolish of me. Oh, it is nothing, Papa. It is a beautiful May morning. I did not ask you to accompany me, my dear, because I think you should get all the rest you can this morning. Late nights don't suit you. Oh, nonsense, Papa. I am in the best of health. And besides, I was not late. Oh, you are so like your poor dear mother. Never mind, my child. I will look after you. Oh, hurry up. We should never have come this way. But it's so much quicker. What's that? Oh, it's only the gypsies. They won't see us. Come on. to greet you. Oh, come on. Are you sure it's safe? Of course it is.
quick, run! Spare us a copper, miss. Go away. Spare a copper for the gypsies. Go away, I have no money. Leave me alone. You got a lucky face, lady. Read your palm, shall I? Go away. Shall I read your palm, eh? Tell your fortune, shall I? Don't touch me. Oh, leave me alone. Go away, I have nothing to give you. I have no money. Take your filthy hands off me. What's all this then? Miss Smith, what's happened? What have those ruffians done to you? Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh. Can you manage? Nearly there. There we are, then. There we are. Harriet, Mr. Churchill, what has happened? Oh, may she sit down, please? She feels a little faint. Please bring her in here. But is she hurt? Has there been an accident? Oh, not hurt, thank heaven. Merely frightened. There. Those, uh, those confounded gypsies on the common. Oh, no. Uh, oh, it's all right. By the greatest good fortune, I was just passing by and was in time to drive them away. You saved her? Oh, it was nothing. They were only children. <laughs> they would scarcely have harmed her, I think. Though she was in some distress when I when I reached her. Well, now I must be going. Oh, Mr. Churchill, will you not stay a while? Oh, I cannot. I'm already late. But I leave her in good hands. Goodbye, Miss Woodhouse. Goodbye. Miss Smith. Oh, my poor dear Harriet, are you sure you suffered no hurt? Oh, Miss Woodhouse, he drove them off. But your gown, I mean, look. That must have been when I fell. You fell? Oh, yes, but he pulled me up. He helped me to my feet again. But what were you doing crossing the common alone in the first place? Oh, I was not alone, Miss Woodhouse. Betty was with me. Betty? Oh, Betty Bickerton. But she ran away. Really, it was just the greatest good fortune in the world that he should happen to be crossing the common at that very moment. Was it not, Miss Woodhouse? Mr. Churchill, I mean. Indeed it was, Harriet. Oh, Miss Woodhouse, I think Mr. Churchill is the bravest man I've ever known. Well, then, sometime, when you feel you can, I think you should go and thank him for his kindness. Miss Woodhouse, do you think I might? Would it be proper? Oh, perfectly proper. Indeed, I consider it to be your duty. Miss Woodhouse. No, you stay there, Harriet, until you are fully recovered. I will bring my work in to join you. Miss Woodhouse. There is something I must tell you. A confession I have to make. A confession? About what, pray, Harriet? It is my wish that I should have no secrets from you, Miss Woodhouse. Absolutely none. Thank you, Harriet. I fear I have been guilty in the past of a very foolish and ill-judged affection. I think you know to whom I refer. Uh, yes, I think so, Harriet. Miss Woodhouse, how can I have behaved in such a manner? Well, the very thought of it now fills me with shame. Why did you not chide me for my stupidity? You are referring to Mr. Elton, I imagine. Oh, it seems now like madness. I can see nothing at all extraordinary in him. I do not care whether I meet him or not. Except of the two, I would rather not. And I do not envy his wife in the least, not the least little bit. And I thought the bonnet she wore to church last Sunday quite hideous. Well, then I consider your cure complete. There is just one more thing, Miss Woodhouse. Oh, and what is that? Looks like a piece of old court plaster. It is. Oh, Miss Woodhouse, do you not remember? Oh, you must. Oh, remember what, for goodness sake? Well, it was here in this very room. He was sharpening a pencil and, and he cut his finger. You recommended court plaster, if you recall, but had none with you. So I 
you some of my own. Oh, yes, yes, now I do remember. Oh, my dearest Harriet, you make me more ashamed of myself than I can bear. But why, Miss Woodhouse? Well, you see, Harriet, I had plenty with me in my pocket, but I thought to leave you alone to perform this little healing act for him yourself. Oh, my sins, I deserve to be under a continual blush for the rest of my life. No, Miss Woodhouse. You see, I cut him a piece. But it was too large. So he cut it smaller and, and stood playing with the piece in his hand a little before dropping it aside. So as soon as you and he had gone out of the room, I found the piece upon the floor. And in my nonsense, I made a treasure of it. I have worn it in my locket next to my... to my person from that day to this. Oh, my dearest Harriet, what can I say? Miss Woodhouse, I am going to burn it. Now. Harriet, are you sure? Yes. I wish you to see how rational I have become. Very well, then, if you wish it. There. That is an end to Mr. Elton. I shall never marry. Never marry? Well, this is a new resolution, surely. It is one that I shall never change, however. Harriet, I hope this is not a form of... of compliment to Mr. Elton. Mr. Elton? Oh, no. Good. I am glad. Oh, he is far, far superior to Mr. Elton. Harriet, I will not pretend to be in doubt as to your meaning. Your resolution never to marry is because the person in question is too high above you in station. Is that not so? Miss Woodhouse, I have not the presumption to suppose he would ever even notice me. Oh, indeed, I am not so mad. But it is a sufficient pleasure for me to admire him from a distance oh, and to think of his infinite superiority to all the rest of the world with gratitude Wonder and respect. Dearest Harriet, I am not at all surprised. The service he rendered you was enough to warm your heart. Miss Woodhouse, it is something I should never forget all my life. When I saw him approach me in all my wretchedness before, in one moment, what a change from perfect misery to perfect happiness. It is quite right that you should feel for him, as you do, Harriet. But I do advise you not to give way to your feelings too much, because I cannot by any means assure you of their being returned. I give you this caution now, Harriet, because I do not wish to speak on the subject ever again. No, Miss Woodhouse. I am determined against all interference. Henceforward, I know nothing whatever of the matter. Let no name ever pass our lips. No, Miss Woodhouse. We were very wrong before. We will be doubly prudent now. Yes, Miss Woodhouse. Oh, 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 come in! Come in! It's only a shower. Oh, it will soon pass. Please come up, everybody. Oh, Jane, dear, we are to have an unexpected party. Did you see that, Mr. Knightley? Indeed. All our friends caught in the rain while shopping. Yes. <laughs> Come in, everyone. Miss Woodhouse. Oh, Come so on, you, Miss Wiggs. Mr. Lacey. He just dropped in with some eggs. Oh, 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 thank you, Mr. Lacey. Come sit down. Oh, night, Mr. Knightley. Mr. Knightley. <laughs> Mr. West. And how is your good wife? Well, I hope. Oh, tolerably, thank you, Miss Bates. But her walking days are over, I'm afraid, at least until after our happy arrival. Oh, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Please give her my good wishes. Yes. Well, now, Mr. Weston, I do hope you are not too wet. Oh, it is nothing, my dear, nothing. It's a pleasure to walk with you, my dear. Rain or shine, ain't that right, eh, son? Of course, Father. Miss Woodhouse knows that very well. I'm sure I know nothing of the sort, Mr. Churchill. Well, Frank, does it still rain? Well, a little, I think. Ah. Ah. I see Paul Perry ride by with his coat collar oh. turned up. <laughs> so he's not set up his carriage yet, then? What? Perry set up a carriage? Whatever gave you that notion, boy? I thought you said so in one of your letters, Father. Not I, boy, not I. It's the first I've heard of it. <laughs> oh, well, then, I 
Must have dreamed it, no doubt. Well, did you know about this, Emma? <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Weston, but then I am always the last to receive the latest gossip. Oh, cannot think how Frank can have got hold of such a story. I told your father the whole thing clearly rests in my imagination. And Miss Bates, is there any truth in it, you suppose? Well, Mrs. Perry did mention the possibility to my mother some time ago. Did she not, Jane, dear? Did she, Aunt? I'm afraid I don't remember. Oh, yes, dear. Mama told us just when we got in from our walk that morning. Did you not, Mother? But the information was strictly confidential, so, of course, I said nothing. <laughs> there, I'm told I do talk a little upon occasion. Is that not so, Miss Woodhouse? But I'm sure when a thing is in, in strict confidence... I... Why, what's the matter, Jane, dear? Well, bless my soul. To think that Frank in Yorkshire should know more about Highbury than we do, eh, Mr Knightley? It is somewhat surprising. Ah, I, I think it has stopped. Father, we mustn't trespass on Miss Bates's time any longer. Oh, no, no, indeed not. Come along, Miss Smith. Let us lead the party oh, back to Hartfield. No, no. Yes, Mr. Please, please do not hurry away. Goodbye, Miss Bates. Thank you very much, Miss Bates. So Thank so you for providing oh, shelter. Oh, Miss <laughs> Goodbye. Mrs. Elton. Well, Knightley, so it must all be off, I suppose. Is that not the most provoking thing you ever heard? Hmm? Is it, madam? I'm afraid I have no idea what it is you're talking about. The excursion. What excursion? The outing I'd planned to Box Hill next week. We were to have gone in several carriages and spent the entire day exploring, as my sister and brother-in-law Suckling do in the countryside around Bristol. I tell you, Knightley, at this rate, the season will have worn quite away before we've done anything. Well, by this time last year at Maple Grove, we've been on, oh, I don't know how many trips. Yes. I, I was not aware of any outing to Box Hill. Were well, you not? No, well, the invitations have not yet gone out, I admit, but I thought you would have heard about it from Jane or Miss Bates or somebody. And I assure you, Knightley, that you were on my list. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I'm madam. Thank you, I'm most honoured. We were to have met at the vicarage for a co-collation before starting. Oh, it was all arranged at a York ham ordered and so on. And now, if you please, the bishop has demanded the presence of my cattle spoils on some tiresome business at the palace. I know not what. And I can't very well entertain so many guests alone. Well, can I? Can you not? I would have thought that well within your compass, Mrs. Enton. But it would look so strange, would it not? A newly married wife without the protection of her husband. And I'd arrange that they should all come early so that they could explore the vicarage garden, too. It really is extremely vexatious. Mm. Oh, well. You had better come here instead and explore Donwell before your excursion. Nightly, what a truly splendid suggestion. And then, you see, if our excursion could be limited to a select few, that would solve my problem entirely. Oh, mm. Nightly, Nightly, how clever you are. Yes. Well, you'd better come and pick my strawberries. They're ripening fast. Oh, that'll do admirably, quite admirably. You and I shall arrange this together, Knightley. And now, one moment, Mrs. Edson. Oh, very well. If you prefer, you may leave it all to me. I'm no callow young lady in these matters. A married woman has full authority, you know. Leave it all to me, Knightley. I will issue the invitations. And uh, No, Mrs. Elton. There is but one married woman that I would allow to issue invitations to Donwell. Oh, and who's that, pray? Mrs. Knightley. Mrs. Knightley? And since she does not yet exist, I will manage the matter for myself, if you please. Oh, you are an odd fellow, Knightley. Humorous, that's what you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I insist upon Jane and her, and her aunt, at least. You have no need. The rest I'll leave to you. And let me say, I've no objection to meeting the Woodhouse family. Do not scruple to invite them on my account, if you so wish. Mm. I may say, Knightley, I'm very sensible of your particular kindness in this whole matter. You've gone out of your way to do the very thing which gives me greatest pleasure. I know that, and I shall not quickly forget it. Uh, thank you, madam, but... Um... Nightly, I've just had the most engaging idea. Would it not be excellent if Jane and Miss Bates and I should come riding upon donkeys? Oh, yes, now, would not that be delightful? <gasps> I must speak to my cattle spoza about it. She really is the most preposterous of women. I know of no one who can rouse me to anger so quickly or with such certainty. On the contrary, I find her self-satisfaction and her total lack of true comprehension a constant source of private entertainment. Yes, I have to admit, I, I nourish a strange kind of delight in her. And that is something that you and I do not share. As indeed her attachment to Jane Fairfax. Hmm? Emma, you 
noticed recently. Another kind of attachment between Miss Fairfax and Frank Churchill. Frank Churchill? Oh, no, never. Well, I thought I had observed something, on his side at least. Jane Fairfax and Frank Churchill. Mm. Mr Knightley, you amuse me excessively. Oh, no, I think I can vouch for that, as far as the gentleman is concerned. Anyway, I am in no position to answer for her. Oh, no, I think you are quite mistaken. I almost hope I am, for her sake. May I have your attention? Your attention, one moment. Ladies, ladies, please. Now, if you all like to gather it your is box, your house. She has no right. Oh, I cannot look. I cannot endure it. As many as you wish. I'm told there are more than enough. Your strawberries. Well, and I'll Excuse me, Emma. Find a small calculation laid out upon the dining table. Thank you. Mrs. Uh, Cox, have your mask in that side. Down the path to the kitchen garden. The boy will show you. Mr. Churchill, I want. Where is Mr. Churchill? Has he not arrived yet? I asked him on no account to be late. Uh, no, not you, Jane, dear. I have something to tell you. Besides, picking strawberries is such a tedious back-breaking task, I always think. Miss Smith? Why have you not joined the others? There were no more baskets, Mrs. Elton. Well, pick into Miss Cox's, then, or one of the other girls. You can't all have baskets. No, Mrs. Elton. It's all right, Mrs. Elton. Harriet, come and let me show you the arbor walk. It's more pleasant and shady than the kitchen garden. Thank you, Mr. Knightley. He's a strange fellow, is he not? One cannot always make him out. Jane, my love, I have this very morning received an answer to my letter. What letter is this, Mrs. Elton? What letter indeed? My dear, the position is yours. There, is that not delightful? So your troubles are at an end at last. Mrs. Elton, I had no notion that you had done this. No, no, don't thank me, please. It's no more than you deserve, I'm sure. My dear, a most excellent family, known personally to my sister, so you will no doubt actually be visiting Maple Grove. <laughs> oh, I'm so delighted on your behalf. Nothing could give me greater pleasure. But, Mrs. Elton, I did not ask you to submit my name in this way. I'm sorry, but I really cannot accept it. Nonsense. You have good qualifications. It's they who should be glad to secure your services. I put in the strongest of recommendations, and no doubt coming, as it were, by way of Maple Grove, tip the scales in your favour. That's settled. I suppose I'd better go and see what they're all about. I'm sure if I did not continuously keep my eye on them, they would do nothing of themselves. So Susan, that's a strawberry root. Miss Woodhouse, when Mrs. Elton returns, would you be so good enough as to tell her I'm gone home? Well, certainly, if you wish. Shall I give a reason? Say, I have a very severe headache. Oh, then are you wise to walk out in the strong sunshine? Oh, yes, the movement will do me good. But alone? Miss Woodhouse, we all know at times what it is to be wearied in spirit. Mine, I confess, are exhausted. The greatest kindness you can show me is to let me have my own way and only say I am gone when it is necessary. Will you all assemble in the dining room, please, in five minutes' time? Well, as soon as your baskets are full, to the dining room, if you please. Mr. Churchill, Mrs. Elton will be greatly relieved by your arrival, I am sure. Oh, why? She knew I might well be detained in Richmond with Mrs. Churchill. I informed her so quite clearly. Unfortunately, Miss Fairfax has had to return home. She is unwell. I know. I passed her on the road. Oh, this heat, it's intolerable. You would feel cooler if you would sit down and remain still. And this excursion to Box Hill. Madness! 
We are not all going to Box Hill. We shall be only a small party. Madness in such weather. Let me ring the bell and get you something cool to drink. Oh, no, 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 Miss Woodhouse. You shall not wait on me. I shall be better in a moment. I'm afraid I'm in a poor humour this morning. Yes, Mr. Churchill, I had observed as much. As soon as the opportunity arises, I shall go abroad. I'm tired of doing nothing. Yes, Miss Woodhouse, you may look at me as you wish. But I am sick of England and would leave it tomorrow if I could. Perhaps you are merely tired of prosperity and indulgence. Can you not invent a few hardships for yourself and be content? I tired of prosperity and indulgence? Oh, you are mistaken. No, I am thwarted in everything material. No, Miss Woodhouse, I do not at all consider myself a fortunate person. Will you all assemble in the dining room, please? To the dining room, everyone, if you please. Yes, leave your baskets here until afterwards. They'll be quite safe. Put them in the shed. I suppose we must obey the summons. I suppose so. I must confess I had arrived with the private intention of putting in the briefest of appearance and leaving before the excursion, but you have persuaded me otherwise. Miss Woodhouse, you have cured my ill humour. I, Mr. Churchill, I have not said a word. No, you do not have to. Thank you, Mr. Churchill, but I am perfectly capable of managing on my own, you know. Ah, but you see, I am not. Some horrid creature crawling upon my neck. I I'm sorry? Here, look. Surely there's something. Just here. Oh, yes. In the absence of my caro sposa, you may remove it if you wish. Our companions are very dull and stupid this afternoon. What shall we do to rouse them, eh? Shh, Mr. Churchill. Ladies and gentlemen. I am ordered by Miss Woodhouse to say that she desires to know immediately what you are all thinking of. <laughs> really, Mr. Churchill? Well, come now. Is nobody going to rouse themselves a little? Is Miss Woodhouse so sure she would really like to know what we are all thinking? Well said, Knightley. Hurrah. Well said indeed. No, to be honest, I should not. Not by any means, thank you. Really, such childishness. I declare I'd quite you outgrown such antics by the time I'd left the nursery. I see I must attack them with more address. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Woodhouse waives the right of knowing what you are all thinking and only requires something very entertaining from each of you in a general way. Um, <laughs> her demand is either for one thing, very clever, prose or verse, original or repeated, or two things, only moderately clever, or three things, very dull indeed. And she promises to laugh heartily at all of them, do you not? I will do my best, certainly. Well, come now, ladies and gentlemen, who will begin? Oh, dear. Miss Smith. No, Mr. Weston, I couldn't possibly. Oh. Well, come, somebody, please. Three things, very dull indeed, did you say? Oh, well, that will just do for me, will it not? I'd be sure to say three very dull things as soon as I open my mouth. 
Shall I not, Miss Woodhouse? Ah, yes, but on this occasion, I fear you will be limited to only three, Miss Bates. That is the difficulty. <laughs> oh, yes, to be sure. I do see what she means. I must try to hold my tongue in future. I like your plan, Emma. I'll do my best. How will a conundrum do, eh? Oh, it would rate low, sir, I'm afraid. Very low. No, no, it shall not. Not from Mr. Weston. Come, sir, let us hear it. Very well, then. What two letters of the alphabet express perfection? It's not very clever, I'm afraid, but it's the best I can do for the moment. Two letters that express perfection? I'm sure I do not know. I'm quite sure you'll never guess, so I'll tell you. It's M and A. Emma, oh, do you see? Do you get it? <laughs> well, really. And now we know, do we not, the kind of clever thing that is wanted. But perfection should not have come quite so soon. Mrs. Elton, you are extremely quiet. I'm sure you have some witty thing to contribute. Pray excuse me, Mr. Churchill, if you will. I'm not at all fond of this kind of thing, I'm afraid. Miss Woodhouse must forgive me, but I'm not one who has witty things to say at everybody's service. I really must be allowed to judge when to speak and when to hold my tongue. Pass me, please. Oh, very well. Besides, I've become a little tired of exploring so long upon one spot. I think we should start our return. Mr. Knightley, if you'd be so kind. Allow me, Miss Woodhouse. Thank you, Mr. Come Churchill. along, Miss Bates. Let me give you a hand. Oh, how kind. There we are. Oh, stiff. Now, then, if you take this... Thank you. I'll bring the rug. Well, well now, I do I hope you've enjoyed your day. Oh, yes, thank, thank you, Mr. Enjoy. Mr. Knightley. Yes, there's anything to do. You and I have scarcely spoke the whole afternoon. Emma, how could you? What do you mean? Treat poor Miss Bates in such a cruel manner. Oh, Mr. Knightley, I was only jesting. Besides, I do not suppose she fully appreciated my meaning. I can assure you she did, and she was very much hurt by it. Mr. Knightley, she is a dear old creature in many ways, but really, you must admit that in her, what is good and what is ridiculous are very finely blended. Oh, I admit it. And were her circumstances the same as your own, I should say nothing of it. But think how far this is from being so. She is poor. She has sunk from those comforts that she was born to and will doubtless sink further. She should excite your compassion, not your ridicule. You, whom she has known since a child, to laugh at her and humble her before the whole company in such a cruel manner. But, Mr. Knightley... Emma, Emma, that you of all people should allow the flattery of a moment to cloud your judgment so. It distresses me beyond belief. I've collected so many flowers and grasses. Look, Miss Woodhouse. Oh, Miss Woodhouse. 